hello hello my magical friends welcome to this week's tuesday live chat our tlc it is march 16th tomorrow is saint patty's day 2021 how you be today my magical friends and thank you thank you thank you for joining me we have an oldie and a goodie <laughs> of a topic um it's something i call the it's okay syndrome um that i see a lot of um, pet parents doing with their animals so we're gonna get into that hello ms clark how you be today hi louise but i wanted to start out with anything out well actually maybe i should start out with telling y'all who the heck i am um i'm dr andy I'm a doctor of chiropractic and I'm a certified animal chiropractor here. Um, I have a practice here in uh, Golden, Colorado. I've been playing with dogs for going on 18 years, which has just been amazing. They have shown me and taught me and contributed to me in ways that are um, unexplainable. Miss Amy Scott. <laughs> Oh, my dear friend have not seen you in ages and Zoe and Ruby mwah, thank you for being here uh, so what we talk about here is different stuff different ways to look at things um, we're not talking anything uh, that should be misconstrued as any kind of veterinary care. So we're just having conversations, we're asking questions, we're looking at the energy, and we're just being different with our animals here. So thank you. I'm here every Tuesday, Tuesday live chat, right? I haven't talked about chat in a while, right? I, I, I invite people to have chats all the time. Kind of that light um, feel to it, you know, instead of, you know, when you're in a relationship and somebody goes, we need to talk, you know, it gets very, dramatic. It gets very heavy. It gets very serious. This way we're just going to have a chat. We're going to look at the energy around your animal. We're going to look at the energy of what's going on for you. We're just going to have a chat. We're going to do a little communication. We're going to uh, throw in some health stuff maybe. What's going on with your animal and is it a big deal for them or is it just a big deal to you, right? We're going to make do a little assessment of what is exactly going on and what are your targets. Uh, and we just, so that's a chat. So we're just going to have a chat, real light, very, very airy. And today, any questions? I've gotten lots of hi, so I am so grateful. Uh, any, any topics anybody wants to throw out there? I probably should have done that, then introduced myself to those that may not know me. And then you'd been done typing, right? There's Miss Keisha. I've got the two Clarks. In, in my life. Mwah. <laughs> okay, topic of today, the it's okay syndrome. How often have you found yourself um, talking to your animal, um, responding to your animal, being, being um, with your animal with that energy of it's okay. It's okay. They're starting to act up. They're starting to get nervous. They're starting to X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Is it, really? Are you actually being present with what is, um, what is the energy in that moment? Are they actually responding to what is going on in your head? Because, oh, here, 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 here's a secret, secret. Your animals are psychic. Beyond your imagination, they are psychic. They live up here. So if this starts to go, excuse my French, off the rails, and they start showing that in their behavior, and all that's coming out of your mouth that's not matching up here at all is, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, you are essentially lying to them. And, oh yeah, they know it. And so that makes them even more uneasy with your capacity to handle what is going on. What if that's what they're looking for? 
You to be calm, you to be confident, you to have the energy of I can handle this. That actually doesn't mean, hi Miss Amber, that you have to know what's going to happen. You could be straight up with your animals. Dude, we're going to the vet. You have this ugly thing on your lip. We need to have it looked at. I don't, I, I don't know what's going to come of this. You could even go through the crazy that might be going through your head. He's got cancer. You know, he, hey, dude, you might have cancer. You might die. Dude, you might need a tooth removed. Dude, that might be nothing. Like, but what that is, is it's matching the energy. When you have, my dog has cancer, oh my gosh, I, ha I can't afford the dental, oh my gosh, it could be nothing, oh my gosh, this, oh my gosh, this, but all that comes out of your mouth is it's okay. That incongruency is very unnerving for your animals. Oh, wait, it just might be very unnerving for you. What would it take to just stop, a few breaths, and acknowledge the crazy that's going on in your head. Meaning, okay, am I getting worked up here? Okay, what is going, what is required of me right now? Um, okay, I need three minutes to do my freak out and then I'm gonna come back. Like, what is it? Give your permission to be that and match that energy. The more you match the energy, What if that creates more ease for you and more ease for your animals? That it's okay syndrome, huh? Do you do it to yourself? You're starting to get ramped up and instead of acknowledging that, maybe even indulging in that, um, looking for another way to change the energy, you to yourself go, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it'll be okay, it's okay, it's okay, it'll be okay. Truth, does that even work? Just something to look at, right? The it's okay syndrome. They don't, another another one that happens a lot in my office is they're unsure about getting adjusted. Maybe they've never had it before. Maybe they've been coming for years and they're really sore and they're aware that it's not gonna be the most fun adjustment and they're fidgety, and they're maybe painting a little bit more than um, moms used to. They're a little more side eye to me, right? What do pet parents generally do? Oh, it's okay. Well, actually, what if it's not okay, right? And the more they fidget, the more mom or dad gets nervous, the more they fidget, the more they get, like it escalates up and up and up and up and up. So what if, take a deep breath, right? We just stop, take a breath. And that's where I will ask the animal a question. I'm like, dude, what's up today? You know, if they've been in before. Um, when they're brand new, what I usually tell them is, I am up to something. Cause it's true. I'm evaluating muscles, I'm looking at joints, I'm touching them very differently than the usual pat on the head. I'm up to something. Owners will think it's funny and they're like, well, we better keep an eye on her. I go, yes, you should. I am always up to something. That actually matches the energy. And even though I'm admitting that instead of just telling him he's okay, that usually settles them like, oh, I am accurate that I do need to keep an eye on you. And I do have the energy of, and it's been many years in the making of, I've got this. We're going to do this and you're going to feel better but we have to go through this. And that's, they get that. I'm not there just saying it's going to be okay. Uh, you know, I know it will be, but that's not acknowledging the full rainbow of energy that the animals are picking up. Okay, what does this Sarah have? We are thinking that because the animal wants it to stay the same and not want to do anything about it. We are thinking that because, you'll have to clarify that, darling. 
But we were texting about this um, prior to me going live um, that brought up an energy. That was really cool. So thank you, Ms. Clark. Uh, she's like, oh, love the title, blah, blah, blah. And it's not the first time Sarah has heard me talk about it, the It's Okay Syndrome. That's the title I give it anyway. Uh, but she's like, it's great. It's, it's what I needed right now, and it's uncomfortable. And I, I'm like, huh, it's uncomfortable. Does that mean, and it kind of goes back to a couple of the energies pre previous that I was talking about, is how much do we go to it's okay to placate our worries instead of acknowledging them, being aware of them, and even indulging in them. Because the more you resist and react, and what if the it's okay is a resistance and reaction to the energy that you don't want to look at? How much is it's okay is your resistance and reaction to something on their lip that they're getting checked out because you don't want to know what it actually is. It's a, re it's a resistance um, to that energy. So, okay, she so re-asked the question. This is awesome. Thank you. What if the animal doesn't want anything to change? Therefore, we don't need to do anything. Yeah, ask the animal. Easy for you to say, Dr. Andy. Well, it is actually easy. And how many of us are not actually comfortable with not, without, with not, let's go with that, with not doing something? I had a conversation. <laughs> Amber's like, always, it's always okay. It's totally resisting, yeah. I'm not sure what you're picking up from the animal, Sarah. Um, I don't know. I'm going to follow this one. And then if we circle back around to that, that'd be great. Uh, if the animal would not like something to change, um, are you okay? I had this conversation with a gal yesterday. Um, if the heart issues, um, this little miss dog was having, and this little miss dog would rather play and be crazy and have so much fun, I asked mom, I go, how okay are you that that's going to shorten her life, if it shortens her life? And she was like, I'm fine with that. And that actually matched the energy. But how many of us are not fine with that? We shut down the play. We don't go for as long of walks. We don't do this. We don't do this because we're managing what's going on with our animals. Whereas the animals are here in their bodies going, hey, I'm here. I want to go do this stuff. And if I can't do this stuff, why am I here? Uh, I, I generally bring up Jax. Jax showed me so much in his 13 and a half years with me. So grateful every single day. Uh, I don't know how long, a couple years, three years, I had a vet tell me that she, okay, here comes the judgments. Okay, you ready? Ready for it? We bring in all the judgments. Bring it. Okay. Uh, so he was, I don't know, maybe 11-ish, something like that. She goes, his heart sounds a little funny. You need to go to the cardiologist. And clear as day, that dog told me, don't you dare, bitch. Because we had that relationship. Um, and we never went. I never, oh my gosh, the worst pet parent ever. Right here, right here. Never went and found out what that um, vet heard. Never did it. He didn't want to go. And as far as I am aware, it didn't impact him. And it was something that he died with. You know, two and he died at 13 and a half. He passed away. He left this body. But how many of us are willing to hear our animals, willing to ask that question, willing to not do something? Now, <laughs> you know, yeah, let's just leave it at that. I mean, we could go on and on and on on that. But how many of us are willing not to do something? And then how many of us are willing to do something even if your, your animal says no? Because I, I have animals on my table every single day. I don't want to do this. Okay, I get that. And 
what if we did it anyway? <laughs> this is, you know, because what if on occasion, you being calm, you being confident, you being in your knowing that whatever you're choosing is going to contribute, you could still choose it. I'm losing questions here. Miss Ashley. Yes. What if you say it's okay out loud, but the energy behind it is we are in this together and we'll handle whatever comes. Yes. Energy trumps everything. Everything. The energy trumps everything. Um, whatever comes out of your mouth, they know you're lying and it doesn't match that energy. If you are incongruent, they know it. Simple, every single time, fractions of seconds before you even know it. Um, they are amazing beings. And yes, I was, we went for a walk on the trail and this the trail ended up going under the highway. I didn't know exactly where we were headed. And so it's really dark and long and it was daytime and Sean was with and the whole pack was there and Crosby was not having, not having it. And what I did was walked faster, stood up straighter. It's okay. We're doing this. And we did. And after we got out of it, we had a little session of play and good boy and here's some cookies. Uh, but to continue our walk, we had to go through this. So there was a little, it's okay, um, changed how I was walking. Um, I've got more present, got more present with the leash in my hand, picked up the pace. We're doing this. Uh, we had to go back through it on the way back. Uh, wasn't fabulous, but it was like 80% better. He's like, oh, mom's got this. We get out on the other end. Way cool. The other three didn't think anything of it, you know, so, so yes, it, the energy trump, trumps all. <laughs> okay, Amber's translating Sarah for me. <laughs> she said, um, she's talking about what if we are picking up the energy from the animal, being okay, uh, not wanting things to change. Okay, so essentially we humans are picking up, it's okay. Yeah, that wasn't what we were talking about at all. But yes, thank you, Amber. I needed the translation. Uh, yeah, if you ask the animal and you think there's something that needs to be changed and they're like, nah, it's fine, it's okay. The energy trumps it all. This is the it's okay syndrome. Everyone is, you know, they're nervous. They're not being present. They're just trying to convince the animal and themselves of stuff that they, they, they're just trying to be, I guess, over the top positive about it instead of acknowledging what it really is. Ashley says, Emma would never call me on my bullshit. Yeah, Jack's never called me on my bullshit either. <laughs> um, Sarah says, what if you're mixing up the energy in your head? <laughs> It's one of the many things Dr. Andy is for. Well, what if that's also a lie you tell yourself? What if you do know? What if you're actually not mixing up the energy? Like if there is something, hang on, let me, can, can we talk about, can we, what's coming up for me, Sarah, is Daisy's eyes. Can we talk about them? I'm going to wait for her to. Is this, is that a no? <laughs> Please. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. That was funny. Okay. So Daisy is diabetic and she's blind. And this reality has been telling Miss Sarah that she needs, uh, the lenses uh, replaced and they actually put plastic lenses in um, because the the sugar coats them and then they can't see through them um, I'm hoping I'm remembering I did a little research I'm hoping I'm getting this correctly getting this correct and then they put plastic lenses in and then the sugar never coats them again so they actually never lose their vision again and if you don't do the surgery and this this is what this reality would tell you if you don't do the surgery it, it's painful and 
you run the risk of um, glaucoma, pressure building up in the eye. And so you must, must get that surgery. So if we go over to Daisy and go, you know, is being blind a big deal in our world? Yes or no? Okay. What do you get? Everybody out there. Detached retina. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Detached retina, not glaucoma. That's something else. That is still pressure in the eyeballs, but you, yes, you can detach the retina. Um, and Sarah, let me know this too. And at that point, yes, no, <laughs> it's a no. Being blind does not bother Daisy in the least. She uses it to her advantage. It is not a big deal in her world. Okay. Um, and at that point that the retina detaches, they can do surgery still, correct? Miss Sarah. Otherwise, I'd have to go look it up again because I don't remember. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, did you read this? This is awesome. Both things are possible with post-surgery, detached retina and glaucoma. And they're both possible if you don't do surgery, right? This is where you go. Okay, I'm not, anywho. This is where you go find information. Go do your own, Google search, go have conversations about stuff. Like I, ha I don't know eyeballs. I, we did not detach retina. I did, we did not do a lot of eyeball stuff in chiropractic school. I did, we did not get a lot of eyeball stuff in my animal chiropractic courses. Not a lot of adjusting to do with the eyeballs. Um, so I would have to go look that up. I got, I'm gonna go find information. I'm gonna go to vet websites. I'm gonna go to, um, not vet websites. I'm going to gather information. I'm going to go talk to the professionals. I'm going to get information from them. It does not mean I have to buy their point of view. So we can ask Daisy, is she in pain in this 10 seconds? Yes or no? <laughs> right? Would you like, would the surgery be a contribution to you right now? Yes or no? Follow the energy and you can do that. You can then choose to align, be coherent with, be resonant with your animal, or you can do what this reality tells you to do. That doesn't mean you can't change your mind. And you can ask the animal, you can ask Daisy, okay, and at any point this becomes a problem, can you make this very obvious and we'll get it taken care of? And no, I can't adjust eyeballs. Um, but see, it's easy. It's ease. Are you willing to stand in your knowing and to stand with your animal when you have all of these projections and expectations placed on you by professionals. And what if you choose to go with professionals, you go with the veterinarians, we're gonna go, we're gonna do this big surgery. Is it really okay? How, how much do you, when you choose to align and agree with it, somebody else's point of view, instead of being in your knowing, do you go to, it's okay to convince the animal and to convince you? And you can always change your mind. That's why I say 10 seconds. You can write out a calendar if you want to, to ask Daisy these questions every two weeks and see if the energy shifts. It's a little too much structure for me. I generally go, hey, girlfriend, make it obvious and I'll, I'll get this done for you. And that obvious could be a sign, it could be an actual physical symptom. It could be you get, you know, hit over the head in the shower one morning 
oh, we need to get this done now. And that has happened with uh, my animals. It's been very obvious in a physical form and it's been very, you know, upside the head energetically from them. You can always change your mind. And just because something bothers us does not mean it's bothering your animal. Just because, oh, she's blind. How much does she love using that to her advantage? Oh yeah, and these critters know this. When they come in to this body, this lifetime, they know what they're going to be traveling through because they are much more willing to be aware of that than we are. That kind of stopped the energy, didn't it? Like, <laughs> everyone's like, no, that's not, <laughs> that's not possible, right? Like, but what if it is? Yes, we could talk about eating shit again. We could. And if you can get to 110% allowance, Miss Clark, of her eating shit, it might lessen it. But there are so many points of view by all the people on the planet about it, it's energetically dif difficult to shift that. Um, it's... Uh, the simplest example I have, because people, that kind of just like blows up their brains, right? Is when you're on a diet, you get rid of like all the M&Ms in the house, right? In this reality, that's what you're supposed to do because M&Ms are bad for you. Um, all those points of view. But what if you actually put a big bowl out in the middle of the room and you can have as many M&Ms as you like whenever you'd like an M&M? Are they just so much less attractive all of a sudden? Well, if I can have them all the time, but because we have that resistance that we, ha that dogs shouldn't eat shit and everything, <laughs> in all those points of view, right? Like they should not eat poop. They're like, ooh, I'm gonna eat the poop. And the more you're like, please stop eating the poop, please stop eating the poop, it's gross, I hate it. They're like, ooh, I'm gonna eat more poop. Right? I'm not saying, you know, you put a, anyway, but the energy is similar. So how much more allowance can you be when your animals choose to eat poop? We went from okay to poop today. How exciting is that? <laughs> how much fun did we have? Um... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> Anything else out there in the world? <gasps> Any more questions? Any more um, poop comments? <laughs> because, you know, with animals comes poop. Talk about it a lot. <laughs> and how much more present can you get with your animals in every 10 seconds? present with what's going on in your head, present with what they're reacting to that is going on with you because they are psychic, psychic, psychic. And if it's going to be okay, can you be 100% congruent with that energy of it's gonna be okay? And just ask, how can I be congruent with this? Like walking through that tunnel with Puddle. I could hopped around with him. I could have gotten mad at him. I could have, you know, lured him along with cookies. Instead, I stopped. I did shorten up the leash and I walked with purpose and an energy behind that. We're doing this. It's okay because we're doing this. We are doing this. Poop, there it is. Hashtag poop, there it is, right? All right, my magical friends. I think that's it. Once again, another TLC in the books. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you for joining me at my new time, 5.05. We're going to do lives on the fives. 
Um, I hope, and uh, I'll be back next Tuesday. Until then, until then, how much fun can you have with your animals? You're very welcome. Thank you for being here. So grateful. Bye-bye.